Spec Ops The Line is a third-person military game with a strong focus on a dark and mature narrative where we follow a cast of three Delta Force operators into the heart of a very interesting environment, which is Dubai after it's been ravaged by devastating sandstorms and cut off from the rest of the civilized world. So our, our, our soldiers go into this environment and they find things there that they don't expect, and it's a location where we explore a lot of dark themes in this narrative. And that's the thing that we're focusing on most with Spec Ops The Line. Shoot! Take the gun away! Hang Shoot tight! Shoot on the field! Our mechanics have been crafted in a way to be a foundation for an exploration of a lot of dark themes um, and, and an exploration of this narrative that we're following. And we've specifically chosen our third person perspective which sets us, sets us apart from a lot of, a, a lot of the, the other games that are similar to us as well because we want to watch these characters as they evolve, as they go throughout the different heart-wrenching events throughout the game and as the player makes a lot of decisions throughout the game. That's one thing that I think is very interesting is that we place a lot of the player into a lot of scenarios where he gets to choose and he has to make a decision based on his own preconceptions about morality, about uh, these themes that we're exploring in the line as far as about war and about the human existence even. And so we not only want you to enjoy playing the game because it's fun, which obviously is something that's very important to us uh, with all the mechanics that we're engineering, but we also want you to think about those things and, uh, and, and stop and contemplate as you, as you progress throughout the game uh, and think about how you would uh, how you would experience those things in your in real life. Um, the line is is very interesting to me because it's it's an, it's been an opportunity for us to do something that we haven't seen in, in a lot of other shooters in the genre, and we hope that it's something new and unique for the for the gamer. There's actually a lot of different types of decisions that the player is making in the line, from very small things that you're doing throughout gameplay that even have to do with uh, soldiers that, that fall and are injured but not dead, things like that. But then on top of that, we have these different uh, scenarios where the player enters and is, is asked to make a choice. And each of those choices has ramifications, but some of them are longer than others. But the main thing here is, is that we wanted the player to think about those things. And it's more, it's more a choice for you personally than it is necessarily for, those, for, for, for mechanics or for uh, different positive outcomes that you could possibly have in a lot of other games as, you, as, as you've experienced moral choices. Uh, you're not going to have one choice be good or one choice be bad or one choice give you a bunch of ammo and one not, something like that. We didn't want these to be binary choices. And so I think that that's more than anything says something about you. And that's really interesting to us as developers, especially as we focus tested these decisions in international locations and in the U.S. to see the differences between the way people's culture, cultural interpretations affect the decisions that they make. And so we're really asking you to, to, to not just play the game and enjoy it. We hope you did and we hope you do, um, but, to, but to stop and think a little bit. Need you focused on the mission. What mission? We're basically poking a dead dog with a stick. The squad in, in the line is, is meant as, it's, it's a tool for a number of things that, that we're doing. Um, like you mentioned, it's a gameplay tool. We hope that, th that, it's a, that it's an opportunity for players to express the way that they want to play. Um, we don't want to force players into micromanaging a squad. Uh, this is not a tactical simulation game or something like that. But it does have the, the opportunity for you to interact with the squad, tell them who to attack. Uh, you, you may have noticed that there were sniper attacks that were going on and also um, contextually the squad will react uh, intelligently and throw grenades when it makes sense and things like that. Also there's, there's other contextual commands like uh, you may have seen the, the flash and suppress command that's available when the squad is in position and it makes sense for them to do that. Um, so you can manage the squad, you can tell them who to attack, you can do a number of things with them, but also on top of those things, this is a, this is a narrative tool for us. These are characters, these are very important uh, plot devices for us. Um, the characters evolve throughout the course of the game. So you may have noticed at the start they were very clean, they came in very military with the way that they spoke to each other, the way that they moved, um, and the way that they looked. And towards the end of the game I can tell you that devolves um, in a very interesting way, uh, both visually and with the way that they speak and the way that they react to the commands that you give them as well. So we've, we've had a chance to sort of explore a new and unique way to, to use a squad in a squad-based game. And, I, and we really hope that it becomes an accessible way for people to, to enjoy the, this, this type of experience. 
the thing that I think is, is really unique about our, our usage of the third person perspective here in a military game especially, is that we follow the same characters for the entire game. Um, this, our protagonists are, are essentially with us the entire time. We don't jump around from a bunch, to a bunch of different stories. Um, we follow a, a, a specific timeline that you can track um, throughout the plot of the game. And so visually, we've taken advantage of the third person perspective to do that. So um, as you're following Walker, uh, his, his evolution is very, very evident and visible. Um, on top of that, we've got some cool things that we're doing gameplay wise with the third person perspective. Like for example, and with the cover system. Um, you can take cover, but also uh, we have a, a really cool melee system where you can, you can actually see uh, the characters performing really physical moves, which, which I think is really interesting, and, and some unique ones. Like if you vault when enemies on the other side of cover, you can kick them in the face and knock them down and things like that. Also, it's um, tying a little bit into our, our moral decisions as well, some of the micro decisions that are along the way. You may have noticed that there's enemies on the ground that are bleeding out. Um, some aren't dead, and, and also they have resources that you may want. Um, it's really interesting to watch how players uh, express themselves in that case. Some want those guys to just be out of their misery and shoot them really fast. Others want to punish them and they, they execute them, so we provided systems for that as well. Um, other people just want to be away from that as fast as they can and they leave. And so it's another one of those things where we've used that as a device for, for our plot and for our themes that we're exploring in the line. Today we're focusing on single player, obviously, but I, I can tell you that we have a great multiplayer. We're going to be talking a lot about, a lot more about it in the, in the upcoming months very soon, um, and I, I can't really spoil anything else about that for you right now. If you, if you pay close attention, you'll notice actually sand is, is, is more involved with the gameplay than, than you'd expect. If you throw frag grenades, for example, into the sand, it actually kicks up big dust clouds, um, which I haven't seen in other games the way that we're doing it. Um, it's one of the things that we've really, since, since the last time we talked about the game, we really went in and tried to focus on our post-processing, our, our particle effects, and all those things have to do with sand. And um, so you'll notice that, that enemies get sand in their eyes and they're coughing and, and the squad reacts to that and, and takes them out and you can as well. Um, on top of that, you did mention there's, there's sand avalanches. So they're, at the start of the game, we teach those things so the player can very easily recognize those in the environment. But we have a number of those throughout the game and if you're perceptive, you'll find opportunities to use them. On top of that, I, we have those, those sandstorm moments that are in, in a number of our chapters in the game. Um, where it really kind of turns the tables on the combat, it makes it into a completely different experience. And we've been able to put a lot of work into the physicality of those sandstorms. You'll see them ripping apart buildings and pushing objects and, uh, and taking out enemies and things like that. And it's been a lot of fun to be able to focus on that. Um, and I'm glad we've had the time to do that. We have a number of very interesting set pieces, basically. So we go from standard combat to to these set pieces that add a lot of variety to the, to the scenarios. Like you mentioned, uh, there's a scenario where you fall off of a, off of a building and, and are injured and knocked out and you wake up and your squad is missing. Um, there's other scenarios where we ride along trucks or we fly a helicopter um, in, a, in a, a rail shooter sequence. And so we've tried to add a lot of variety to the game so that we don't get a monotonous experience as we progress through the plot. And I think we've done a, we've done a pretty good job of that and I hope that you guys say the same. I'm Obviously, in a shooter that's, that's realistic where you're fighting human enemies, uh, we don't have big boss monsters and things like that. So we, to add more variety, we have a number of these unique scenarios where you'll come to a location and there's an ambush and you have a very kind of difficult challenge to overcome at that moment. On the harder difficulty levels, you're going to feel really safe behind cover and you're going to feel really unsafe outside of cover. Um, you're going to see a lot of enemies making movements to flank you. Um, you're going to see enemies that fall back when, when it makes sense for them to do so. We also have a variety of enemies that we're showing too. You, you may have seen the, the knife enemies that were coming at you. Um, there's other ones as well that are unique. Um, and they play in a completely different way than the other enemies. And also, you started out um, fighting against uh, actually armed civilians that were, that were in Dubai when the sandstorms hit. They play much, much differently than the, the special forces soldiers that you fight later on in the game. And we hope that that adds some variety as well. As developers at Jaeger in Berlin, we're, we're a young team. We're a team that a lot of people don't know about. 
And I feel like uh, together as a team, we've come together and we've done something very new and unique and exciting. And I'm really proud of the work that this, this team has been able to do.